having undocked after refueling, lights up its nuclear engines for the Transduna injection burn. While this vehicle normally can carry a crew of 12, the vehicle was only carrying a crew of 6 due to concerns over living space. This being Luke Kerman's first time in the commander's seat, he trained for two years, basically starting when the first mission was on its way back, and is now ready to lead this mission to Duna, to colonize it for all Kerbal kind. During the interplanetary coast, nothing much happened except for Daphne getting into a fight over a game of Canasta, claiming she wanted to be able to beat Von Kerman by the time she got back. Having been captured by Duna's gravity well, they slingshotted past Duna and headed right towards Ike. reaching Ike, they line themselves up for a retro burn to slow themselves down into Ike's orbit. The burn having been completed, they settled in and prepared to undock the lander modules. The crew of six, having been strategically divided into two groups of three, were each assigned their own specific lander that they would, they would work and share equipment and space in. While one half of the crew would be going to Ike to land at the new mining colony, half of the crew would later be refueled by this mining colony and then sent on their way to Duna to dock at the orbital station to pick up equipment and supplies for deposit on the Duna surface. The lander that was heading to the Ike base actually contained a experienced pilot who had done this sort of mission many times at the moon base, named Ronner Kerman. He had actually spent up to six months training how to do this exact type of procedure at the moon base, claiming it was much easier than the reduced gravity of Ike. Upon successfully doing a pinpoint docking port landing, the crew unpacked their duffel bags, climbed into the habitation module, and slept for three hours. Two days later, the lander heading towards Duna, piloted by Luke Kerman, was refueled and set up for its trans-Duna injection burn. This burn would take it away from Ike and then set it on a trajectory to intercept with the upper atmosphere of Duna, allowing them to use less fuel to break into an orbit so that way they could rendezvous with the orbiting station and collect their equipment. Upon rendezvous with the Xenon fuel station in Duna's orbit, they redocked to the station, took what little fuel they needed, and then undocked and then watched as the as the Duna colony habitation module undocked itself and oriented it towards the crew lander docking port. Having successfully extracted the 
colony, they turned retrograde, fired their engines, and began their descent towards their target spot on the Duna surface. Due to there being more drag on the colony habitat, the vehicle actually ended up entering upside down. This caused much concern for both mission controllers and the crew members, one of which actually climbed out of his seat and started praying. Luckily for him, his prayers were answered. The parachutes deployed on schedule and Luke Kerman, and a swift motion, activated the RCS and stabilized the entire vehicle with the proper orientation. They touched down safely and climbed in, breathing a sigh of relief that they were finally the first colonists on Duna. Everyone having gotten settled in, Luke Kerman climbed back into the lander and headed off back to the station to pick up the new rover for the base. During his ascent, he temporarily lost control when the automatic control system miscalculated which direction he was pointing. He had to actually manually redirect the craft to the proper attitude. This resulted in a little bit of loss of fuel, but not in a loss of life. Upon reaching the space station, he docked, refueled, undocked, and then grabbed the rover and began heading down. sent to the Duna surface. He actually noticed he was going a bit long. He figured he had entered the number wrong somewhere, but said, eh, 30 kilometers. I can live with that. The rover, having landed safely, was checked over for damage, not much being found. It was undocked from the lander vehicle and then was driven the 30 kilometers back to the base. 
Luke Kerman claiming, I may not be the best pilot, but I certainly can get the job done. Upon arriving at the colony, he parked the rover, broke out a bottle of wine, and christened the station Fort Red, saying, This is where we will live on the red sand for all eternity. If you like this video and want to see more of this, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts on what you want to see next in the comments below. This week, we have two options. I have two videos planned. Which one do you want to see first? How I set up a communications array or a tutorial on how to do a precision landing. Either I am the astronaut. Let's fly.